वेलकम बैक गाइस सो एज एन एवरेज यूजर यू मे बी सेटिस्फाइड बाय जस्ट टिंकरिंग अराउंड विद द यूटिलिटीज यूनिक्स ऑफर्स हम्म बट इट्स वर्थ गोइंग बैक स्टेज एंड गेटिंग द फील ऑफ हाउ लिनक्स एक्चुअली रन्स द शो नोइंग व्हाट नोइंग अबाउट व्हाट गोस इनसाइड द यूनिक्स फाइल सिस्टम इज इन फैक्ट अ मस्ट फॉर एनीवन हु केयर्स फॉर सीरियस प्रोग्रामिंग सो दैट्स व्हाई आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो ऑन लिनक्स फाइल सिस्टम आई हैव प्रिपेयर्ड सम पीपीटीज एंड वी विल गो थ्रू देम वन बाय वन and i will provide you i will share my ppt and i will share my ppt and link to that is in, that i will give you in in the description box so don't worry if you need it go get it so the linux file system first of all introduction file system is a group of files and relevant information regarding them your whole hard disk may comprise a single file system or it may be partitioned to house several file systems however the reverse is not true no file system can be split over two different disks the disk space allotted to a unix file system is usually made up of blocks sorry it is made up of blocks not usually each of which are of typically of 512 bytes some files may have blocks of 1024 or maybe 2048 bytes as well the block size depends upon how the file system has been implemented on a particular installation so to find out the block size on your file system just use the cm check command which reports the block size if you are in unix system if you are in unix operating system but i checked it for linux operating system that i am currently on and it really doesn't work so nothing can be done <laughs> so just google it and you will find the command to find out the block size on your file system now the one more concept that i have not mentioned in my ppt please listen it carefully that the block size really exceeds 2048 bytes whenever a file is created one block is made available for storing this file's contents thus on a file system whose block size is 2048 bytes if we create a small file of 1000 bytes still one block would be assigned for this file storage thereby wasting precious 10048 bytes that is 2048 bytes minus 1000 bytes which will give you 10048 bytes these will get wasted so then won't it be worthwhile having as small as block size as possible mm, no because if the block size is 512 bytes and we create a file of 2000 bytes then to store it on the disk four disk accesses would be necessary remember disk accesses are time consuming more the disk accesses required more would be the time required for reading writing file for reading or writing this file got it now all the blocks belonging to the file system are logically divided into four parts and i have mentioned these as boot block which is followed by the super block then the node table and data blocks let us understand these blocks one by one the boot block this represents the beginning of the file system it contains a program called bootstrap loader this program is executed when we boot the host machine or start the or start the host machine although only one boot block is needed to start up the system all file system contain one boot block that is only one boot block is needed to start up the system so that's why all file system contain possibly empty one boot block only got it next comes down to the super block the super block describes the state of the file system that is how large it is how many maximum files can it accommodate how many more files can be created etc etc 
then comes down to the inode table we know that all entities in unix are treated as files the information related to all these files not the content parts but the information related to all these files is stored in an inode table on the disk for each file there is an inode entry in the table each entry each entry is made up of 64 bytes and contains the relevant details for that files these details i have already mentioned here owner of the file group to which the owner belongs types of file file access permissions date and time of last access date and time of last modification number of links size of files addresses of blocks where the file is physically present this uh this i will discuss with you in a meanwhile uh, in just a moment okay addresses of blocks where the file is physically present that is how the storage of files is maintained by the unix got it now first discuss data blocks and the last one data blocks these contains the actual file contents an allocated block can belong to only one file in the file system this block cannot be used for storing any other files contents unless the file to which it originally belonged is deleted got it now comes down to a certain note that judging by the information stored in the inode table we can see that this must change whenever we use any file or change its permission etc etc making these changes on the disk would gobble up a lot of precious cpu time isn't it so to remedy this a copy of the super block and the inode table gets loaded into memory that is ram at startup time since memory access is faster than disk access as we all know that a lot less time is consumed in recording the changes in the ram copies of super block and inode table every time some modification occurs the original super block and the inode table on the disk are updated after a fixed interval of time say every mm, 30 seconds so this can be done by a command called sync sync synchronizes the inode table in a memory with the one on disk by simply overwriting the memory copy onto the disk thus the changes that may have been recorded in the copy in memory during the last interval of 30 seconds get duly registered on the disk now comes down to how does actually linux accesses files internally a file is identified by unix by a unique inode number associated with it we can obtain the inode number associated with the file by using the command ls i as we have already discussed in my previous video so we know that a directory in linux is nothing but a file a directory file contains the names of the files or subdirectories present in that directory along with an inode number for each the inode number is nothing but an index into the inode table where the information about the file is stored so let us suppose an example suppose the file reports uh, the file name reports is present in a directory called my dir or my directory okay if we attempt to cat the report files or read the report files so we need to use the command cat so if we attempt to cat the report files let us see how linux would handle this situation okay so firstly it would check whether we have a read permission to the my directory directory file if so it would find out whether this directory file has an entry reports in it if such an entry is found then it would pick up the inode number for this file from my directory this inode number as we know is an index into the in core inode number sorry inode table as we know uh, this inode number is nothing but an index into the in core inode table using this inode number the information about reports is accessed from the inode table from this information it is found whether we have a read permission for the read for the report files or not if so 
then the contents of the report files are read from the disk addresses mentioned in the note entry of reports and displayed on the screen okay so actually how storage of files is managed by linux using these inode numbers and all that stuff this comes into play when okay i will tell you this concept also amongst other information each inode entry in the inode table consists of 13 addresses each which specify completely where the contents of the files are stored on the disk these addresses may be numbered 0 through 12 of these the first 10 addresses 0 through 9 points to 1 kb blocks on disk for example a file of size 3 kb may be may have its entries as shown in this figure got it in this figure where is the mouse cursor yeah here it is in this figure as you can see the address 4970 signifies where the first one kilobytes of the file are stored then the next one kb chunk is at 5231 and the next at 3401 okay so these addresses may be scattered throughout the disk as files are stored in chunks wherever empty blocks of disk are available. So this is especially the case with larger files for which a very big chunk may be impossible to find. Thus the address is 0 to 9 here. The address is 0 to 9 can handle a file of maximum size of 10 KB each representing 1 KB or each points out to 1 KB blocks on disk got it now for files for files larger than this size that is 10 KB Unix has a very interesting way of indicating their location as can be seen from this figure here the tenth entry also contains an ad the tenth entry here also contains an address of a one KB block as you can see here. This block doesn't contain the file contents. Instead, it consists of two fifty six four byte slots which can store two fifty six more addresses. That is, it contains one KB block it contains 1 kb block that is 1024 bytes and it consists of 256 4 bytes that is 256 into 4 will give you 1024 so that's why 2 it can contain 256 more addresses here in this 1 kb file got it now each of these 256 blocks these are 256 blocks each of these 250 256 addresses can point to a 1 kb block on disk as here okay so i repeat the 10th entry this 10th entry points to 1 kb block now this 1 kb block can store 256 more addresses okay so these are 256 more addresses now each 256 addresses will point to 1 kb of block on disk got it now okay so thus for a file which occupies 12 blocks on the disk the first 10 addresses would be found in the inode entry for this file whereas address of 11th and 12th block would be present in a 1 kb block whose address in turn is stored as the 11th address in the inode entry so simply the 11th and 12th entry of for that file will be present in this in 11th entry that is 10 okay thus the maximum file size that can be addressed using the 10th address entry is 256 kb got it how it has come because uh, it can contain 256 addresses and each addresses can point to 1 kb of blocks on disk so that's why 256 kb cool this is called single indirection okay for a still larger file double indirection is used 
that is the twelfth address in the inode entry points to a block of 256 addresses each of which in turn points to another set of 256 addresses these are the addresses of 1 kb chunks making the file making the maximum file size accessible by double indirection equal to 256 into 256 kb which is 64 mb so 12th entry would be this 11th this points to 256 more addresses and each of these 256 addresses also points to 256 addresses each got it and now each 256 addresses from here points to 1 KB on disk so that's why the maximum file size that it can accommodate will be 256 into 256 which will give you 64 MB now for an even larger file Unix uses triple indirection this way the last address in the inode entry here yields a massive 256 into 256 into 256 KB that is it will comes out to be 16 JB okay so it uses it uses triple indirection it uses double indirection it uses single indirection and these all represents 10 KB so that means the maximum file size Unix provides for is the sum of size accessible by the 13 addresses that occur in the inode entry together they yield 10 KB for 0 to 9 entries these can accommodate only 10 KB plus 256 KB for 10th for 11th entry plus 64 MB for 12th entry and 16 GB for 12th entry so all these can be summed together they yield 10 KB plus 256 KB plus 64 MB plus 16 GB which is more than sufficient for all practical purposes okay give it a while so whatever I have told you all these concepts I have listed here in the short forms and you can refer them since I am sharing this PPT and you can go through them okay if you got confused you don't understand the prop uh, the concept properly now it is uh, this picture shows the clear version of what I have already discussed and as you can see these represent direct blocks these represent indirect blocks and these represent double direct blocks this is the 11th entry sorry this is the 12th entry no what was that yeah this is the 10th entry this is the 12th entry and there will be a one more entry uh, that is 13th entry and that will represent triple indirection got it so this is how it works now for the later video we will discuss about uh, how links have to what links have to do with inode numbers and some disk related commands so till then happy coding and if you like this video please give a thumbs up please rate comment and subscribe and bye bye